Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy and F64Elite.com. And today, I want to show you how to make uh, better sky images from skies that might already be there when you're on scene. And if they're not, you can put whatever sky you want in here with this technique. But we're going to take this photo from this to this very quickly in under seven minutes. And I'm also throwing in some practice images that you can download and practice this technique with. All right, so I wanna show you this really quick, really simple, really easy way to make your skies better in Photoshop. So here's a quick story, quick lowdown. I'm at Kansas City. This is my favorite skyline shot of the city. I'm here quite often. This time is really special because they turned the Western auto sign back on permanently. And it's been like an 18 year span since that's been off and it's been on intermittently every, every once in a while. But for the last five years, it's been off, off. So it's like, ah, it's back on, okay. So I go there, I'm of course in my head, like every photographer, I'm like, oh, beautiful sunset, it's gonna happen, and it didn't. But the funny thing is, is that to my right is where all the clouds were happening. And I'm like, dude, you're painting the wrong side of the sky here, I need those clouds over here. So what I did was, while I was on the scene, I took the shot that I wanted, I had the vision that I could just move those clouds from the right hand side of the uh, Kansas City over to the spot where I really wanted the clouds to be. So here's the shot that I edited. Here it is straight out of Adobe Camera Raw after some minor editing in Camera Raw. And then after I've worked with some of my panels to get the image exactly where I wanted it to, but it wasn't good enough. So what I have here is I have the sky that was to my right while I was photographing in Kansas City. Obviously, <laughs> it's got some, some pretty bad uh, dust spots on my sensor. I'll go ahead and clean that because I did a video tutorial on that, but I'll just clean those up real quick. Just a hit right there, just a hit right there. Here a hit. There I hit, everywhere I hit, hit. Okay, <laughs> old Blake Rudis had a dirty sensor. Okay, so that looks really good. I have three three young kids. <laughs> so that looks, that looks good. I'm just gonna go ahead and just hit auto on this. I really don't need this to be perfect. I just need it to be good enough. And I'll press open image and bring that over here to this photograph. So how I'm gonna get that from, from where it is here over to here is I don't have mine set up to open my documents as tabs. I have it set up in my preferences to, oh, to not open my documents as tabs. If you go to edit, you go to preferences, you go to workspace, uncheck this little box right here that says open documents as tabs. Because when you're compositing, all I have to do now is press the V key, press and hold shift and move this over to my image. So right now it's underneath all of this work. I'll just turn that work off for now. I can move this sky to exactly where I want it. I don't know if I want the potential of that amount of sky there. Let's just see. let's just go with something like that. That that should be good. And then I'm just going to hit the button here called soft light. I'm going to go to my blend mode on that sky and say soft light. And look at that. It already looks better. Here it is off, here it is on. If I move it up, I can get some more of those clouds after I've hit soft light and that looks really good. And you might be thinking, "Well, dude, now you got that sky there, what are you gonna do about these buildings that your sky is over? It's really simple. I'll click on my background layer, I'll go to my quick selection tool, I'll make a very rough selection for my sky back here, and make sure my buildings aren't in there. Press and hold shift to get this little guy right there too. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm gonna hit this and just make a mask. Look at that, we got the sky on our background. If it's not perfect, that's okay. We just have to make the mask believable enough. So let's click on that mask and then maybe zoom in here a little bit and then just feather that edge a little bit by about two or three pixels and that'll help it blend in a little bit better. But it doesn't stop there. If I click on this sky, if I go to my curves adjustment layer, if I press Alt or Option to make a clipping mask, that will clip this curve layer into the sky and now I can get more out of that sky if I want to. I can make it darker by clipping it in and saying, okay, wait, wait, this is doing is basically saying, okay, there's no darkness in this image. Let's make that area darker. Let's make this area brighter. The beauty of the soft light blend mode is that it will make things darker, but never make them pure black or make them lighter, but never make them pure white. So you can take this curve pretty far, pretty extensive, and you can still get a pretty decent look out of it. And then I'll just do something like this. And that looks about good right there. Then if I turn my work on from the top, there we go. Beautiful sky added to a otherwise not so beautiful image. All the work that I did up here is 
non-destructive. So everything that's in those folders, essentially you can see through. That's why if I put that sky in at the end, it doesn't matter. I can put it at the end. I can put it at the beginning because that's how I operate my workflow. So I did say at the beginning of this that I had some practice images for you. Please go ahead and head over to F64 Academy if you're already there because you're watching it there. Awesome. Just click the button. You can get those skies. If you're here on YouTube or Facebook, go ahead and click the link that says get these images. It'll be somewhere in the description and you're free to work on them too. I'm not giving you my Kansas City Skyline one because I love it, but I am giving you one from Seattle at Cary Park with a sky from the exact same night. So the whole idea behind this is while you're on scene shooting, if you don't have the clouds where they need to be go ahead and shoot them where they are where they are and then just transpose them in later it's not that hard and you're not really lying because if you had godlike powers you could just scrape them over there right i have a whole library full of skies at my disposal that i've taken over a period of time so when you see a good one take a picture of it it doesn't have to be the best foreground to put in front of it because you can always put whatever foreground you want in front of it later in post Again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy and F64 Lead. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend, and download those practice images and start taking more pictures of skies. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I sincerely appreciate it.